grandfather. I ask a special blessing on the elders that have come so far to help us. I ask, Grandfather, that you watch over each and every person that's here and watch over all the children who we're here to honor. Help us, Grandfather. Give us the knowledge and the wisdom and the courage to teach our young people how to overcome the problems that will face them as they grow older. Grandfather, I ask all this in a very sacred way, all my relations. Ho. Oh. I'm happy that I'm here today because it's to speak out because it's my first time going off the reservation and, and going and flying on a plane. Uh, it, was, it was an experience that I never did before. But I'm really happy to be here today. And I don't know if, if any of you guys have questions, you can ask me. Feel free to ask if you want because um, I'm kind of... I had a lot of things to say, but like no, and I'm like in front of a big crowd, and I don't usually do this. <clears throat> I don't know. I really care about my language, my history, my culture. I I look forward to learning it every day. And my <clears throat> Lala Joel, he's in the spirit world now. He he realized the things that are going on in our in our like traditional ways that us natives are growing up. Not, I don't mean to offend anybody, but growing up in a white world, we want, because at one time we didn't. Lakota material, like, made an impression on every person and, that met her. And he said that <clears throat> our language and is falling apart, our traditional ways are falling apart. And he told us, told me, he said, he said, try to go, go out and learn your language while it's still here. And look at, for towards the future, it's going to be a, it's going to be faded away and people will be just learning out of books. I think she was a little nervous, and, uh, but I'll we'll tell you what, she has so much faith and confidence in herself, and this is what gave her the courage to continue. Like here for. Um, I listened to him, and he said, at one time, I had my hair short, it was really short, but he said, grow it, and he said, yo, if you go to sweats, he said, it will give you power, not power to control anybody or myself but just power to help me out. Because he knows I come from an alcoholic family. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm, saying I'm a human being that's with everyone here. I don't know how we'll, what we are going to become in the future, and I'm worried about that each day, looking at these young kids, hoping that our prayers will be strong enough if our people can have unity that circle of life back in place again, where we will all, all pray together as one. So this song is called Resist. And uh, the most important thing about this song is the words. We wrote these words coming back from Wounded Knee and seeing the pain and um, hearing about the tragedy that went on there and the tragedy that was still going on how there was a lot of, still, still a lot of disrespect of uh, the traditional ways and disrespect of the elders and disrespect of each other and the communities. And this happening all over. But it's something that is important to address and recognize so we can start healing. Because there's been a lot of pain that has been caused to our people, inflicted to our people. So why do we need to keep hurting ourselves? And I think that, at least in our traditional ways, respect is the basic teaching. Respect to be healthy, respecting yourself, respecting your community and your family. And this is what this song is about. It's about resisting violence, resisting the violence against yourself, resisting the violence of this system. It's called Resist. I'll tell you about the res reservation life. The reservations, that how people treat us Native Americans. Um, the suicide, drinking, drugs, alcohol, and etc. We have uh, everything that's that's like common in here, Ohio. You guys probably have everything, gang relations, drugs, alcohol. 
I lost a brother that committed suicide in 1990, so I can relate with that. My sister's boyfriend committed suicide in our house too. He was very stressful and his family never cared for him. And my, I don't know, my sister, him and him had a little argument in that time and I was staying on in Little Ego at the time. A couple friends here and this is past, last year, they committed suicide. And it is true, all boys do. The boys do on the reservation, they attempt suicide. And we got like some of our elders on the reservations, They're, they drink too. They sit on the streets and it's, I don't know, it's, it was not right, but, and you see it's their choice because the alcohol is there. Well, my dad has a little bit of a drinking problem. And like, um, his drinking's getting him uh, to try and fight my mom and stuff like that. I know that a lot of my friends drink, and I know where everyone drinks Mok Paula. And they all know when the police officer comes, and they just all hide on one side of the community, on one side of the road, and that police officer drives through, and then they just come back out again. The parents are too scared, and the people that actually want to do some things are too scared, otherwise they're, um, they don't act alone. They don't want to act alone, and everyone's afraid to make the first move, but it's just, it's, it's really bad. I know it's their choice to drink it or not take it, but um, like on a reservation, I go to school at the Standing Rock Grant School in Fort Eats, North Dakota, and we talk about this in our classes because it relates with our history and our language and our culture. Our youth right now face so many problems, um, problems with alcohol, problems with um drugs now we have this new th or it's not really new but i guess um it wasn't around here when i was growing up is the problems with the gangs and stuff like that just trying to fit in and trying to belong something to occupy their time there's not a lot for young people to do on this reservation there's sports and there are certain school activities but, you know there's only a handful of people that participate in them and we need opportunity and activities, uh, things for all of the children to be doing. I drink at time, I did drugs at a time, because we have all that on our reservations, because it's everywhere, even down to little 11 year olds, 10 year olds, do this, what we try to help them. Like, um, I come from a family that drinks a lot too, and I can't control them. I try to, at one time, I not control them, but to change them, but I know I realize that I can't I can't change anybody but myself. So I, I'm trying to get on stay on the red road too. But I don't know, it's just, it's not gonna happen in one day or, or like overnight thing. Just gotta just keep working at it, take one step at a time. I think we all know as adults, we know that most of the kids are standing outside looking in. And somehow we've got to encourage the elders or the parents to bring them back into the middle where everybody is. Do you eighth graders, and you guys still in grade school, well, I really encourage you guys, don't go to um, alcohol and drugs, it'll mess you up. And just don't let those drugs and alcohol bring you down. And if you feel out of place where somebody's gooder than you, they got better things than you, just blow it off. Don't. Don't let it ruin you because, you know, that's them. You ain't trying to impress anybody. You ain't trying to just, just think of, think of it this way. Just, you're going to school for your education, to learn something, not to do I've seen a lot, a lot of young girls like that that are very striking on the reservation. But when I heard her speak, she was not, not a, uh, only striking and a beautiful girl, but she knew what her path was. Say if you, don't, you go to school and you feel out of place, people are bringing you down. But look at it this way. Maybe they drink, maybe they do drugs, maybe they, they're always mean like that. And look it down in the long run. And if they do something out of the way when they're drunk, and then it goes around the whole school, and then, see, you got nothing to say about it. They say, well, at least I wasn't there, and that ain't me. And I ain't going to be stupid like that. So, they, you know, people that want to act good, just don't, just blow them off. 
I do, cause I'm back at home at our school. We got, I got a lot. I know a lot of Native Americans that want to be white or they want to be someone else. They want to be higher than everybody. I mean, I I used to feel like that one time. I just feel out of place, but as I look at it, I was like, well, they, that ain't me. And I'm kind of happy I'm Native. Well, a sweat, a nipi, it's um, you go to heal yourself. Like women, if they're on their moon, they can't go in. But if you're not, you don't got it. You can go in. And there's certain directions you gotta, certain things you gotta say when you go in. And then you go pray for yourself, your family. We go in four, four rounds in a sweat. And you, yeah. And we let out our like our anger and everything in it. We don't go throw tantrum, but we just let it out. Pray to to to, to Nkashi law. Pray to them, and then they will help you. You might you may not see it right when you first go in there. You can't get everything done in one day, one night. How long you're in there? You can't get it all done. But the more and more you go into Inipi, it helps you out a lot. You see more things more clearly. If you have a lot of anger towards someone, it will just fade away and. You won't, and it won't bother you no more. The long boy boy asked me one time, and I said, how you carry yourselves, how you do things, how you talk about it, that's spirituality. You, know, you don't play games with that stuff. It, it will come back at you. You go into a sweat, there's a spirit that's going to be with you, and they're going to help you out. And if you pray to them, they'll help you out. But if you don't use it right, if you go like, I just say myself, I went to a sweat like last year, and I was trying to stay on the red road, I fell off the wagon, and um, I was playing. Uh, it felt like I was playing games because I was going to sweat, but I was same thing. I was doing negative things around me, and they were. I was getting sick. My mom got really sick, and I know I just realized that. Like, I asked the older person about it, and they said, yeah, he can't do that. And I said, all right. So my, I stayed away from a sweat for a long time. And then my auntie just brought me back to so many peace. The ties that you have with your home, be land or, you know, family, it, 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 I think are spiritual in nature. There's that spiritual tie. And, and I believe that out here, we uh, we have a, a stronger sense of that spirituality. We are we are closer to the land. We're closer to each other. No matter where we're at, what we do, we should put the Creator back in our hearts, so we can realize and see things and utilize this the spirit of ours to do a better, to communicate with each other, our children, our grandchildren, our neighbor. This is where we're at now. We have powwows that like, all these, anybody, any kind of tribe, we all, all, all relatives go there and we just sing and dance, and meet new people. And then you see different Native Americans artwork and, and it's, it's good to see too. When I first heard her speak at the conference, tribes, I was tribes, really moved by what she said. I was, I was impressed by what she said. Um, that girl has a lot of things going for her, and uh, uh, my wife and I, we had a day off. We took her out to see and another little girl, and one of the elders, we took Helmina, I believe, we took him out to see the mounds, and she she was very touched. She, she told me when we got through the, she says, uh, I feel the spirits here. I feel that they, that they need help also. She has a lot of impact. She'll make a lot of impact on the young people. And, uh, and uh, I think what her methods, whatever she wants it to be, is going to be very fruitful and helpful to the young people. We got African-American, white, Mexican on our reservations too. And they're all half-breed. And we don't judge them because they're black, because they're white. It's the Native, like, they have Native American in them. We accept them. Well, I do actually, because I got a lot of African American friends that their mom are sitting there with full blood, and their dad is African American. See, I can accept that because it's 
It's their choice to be with each other. I uh, I, I felt that everybody was receiving and acknowledging like, and understanding what her point of view was in this whole thing, and uh, knowing that what she was saying in her simple words that that uh, that she was hitting the nail right on the head of what's needed as a maybe like a bridge between the youth and the adults to to get their viewpoints out. I remember when. When she, before she was through speaking, other kids started, she asked them if they wanted to say something, and kids started getting up and telling her their viewpoint. We got some, like on my reservation, or in the community I live in, we got some wannabe gangsters, and it's really fake. I mean, it gets tiring just by seeing them being fake and fake every day. And then, like, they discriminate, like, white people. And I, yeah, we're gonna beat them up. And I was like, why are you guys gonna be violent towards them? You gotta talk to them and just communicate with them. If they don't accept you, then that's their business. Just don't mind them. But I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of violence where we are. They fight with bats and stuff. It's not like everybody, but it's just, they can get violent sometimes. And we got break-ins around where we live. Like our house already got broken into. I guess there were guys that didn't like Lakota. I don't really understand that, but from what I heard, there there were people already that gave her a hard time. She was a bright little girl. She was small. She went to a Head Start. She graduated from Head Start. She went to the legal day school. And she did well in school. Good grades. She graduated eighth grade. She liked sports and everything. Everything that came up, she was right in there. <clears throat> and she went to high school in Flanger Indian School, ninth grade. And she came back. She didn't start school right away in Portuguese. So she went to Job Corps in Nemo. She was there for a month and she came back. Then she went back to school with grand school. Until they killed her. I knew that it was something real bad. They found her and she was missing. And I called home and I, I got a hold of my cousin Kim. He told me that she got she got beat beat to death. And I was like, they, they killed her because I felt like they were jealous. Like, Cause, it, Cause, I thought, see, something like that would have happened to her. Because how different she was, not different in a bad way. When I couldn't believe it, I felt like someone was gonna come up to me and go like that and snap me out of it or something. It was hard to believe that she passed away. Not personally, and you are as a student. And in the afternoons when she attended school in Wakpala, we had our afternoon classes together, so. She seemed like a fun person to be around. I didn't want to believe it. My mom was on the phone and she told me, cause my dad, my dad called her. She told me, I don't know, I just was, I don't know, couldn't. I wanted to cry, but I just held it in. And I just, I couldn't believe she was gone. Shocked. Um, it's kind of hard to believe that something like that could happen. My mom and them told me to leave it up to God not to feel no, 
not to be hating to whoever did it, whoever was involved, to leave it up to God. And that's what I'm going to do. Because there's nothing I could do about it. Actually, anybody could do about it until it really comes out. And with her torturing, she didn't need to be tortured like that. She was pretty strong. And she's. I hope she put up a good fight. I was having my second mixed blood Sundance in Oklahoma. And uh, it was really an odd thing. Uh, for some reason, when we put our chairs up for the people that passed on, um, there was two or three others, and then I had my sister that passed on last year and my brother Lionel, and um, and then there was an empty chair out there, and I said, why is that chair in here? And everybody said, we don't know. I says, who brought it in? Nobody knew who had brought it in. And I says, well, uh, take it out of here. We're not going to make believe that somebody has died or passed on by having this chair out here. And as soon as it was taken out and set down, my wife came. And she was crying. And she said, Honey, Lakota has been killed. And, um, and of course, she, like I said, she's really missed in our family because we all knew her. And um, they... Uh, Immediately, I asked for the chair to be brought back in, and we put a, a blanket on it, and we did not have a picture of her, so we put uh, uh, we put uh, some flowers on it, and we put a note with her name on it, and a lot of the ladies in the in the support people started making prayer ties to put on her chair, and um, so this is how we found out, and it was. Uh, uh, it was really felt there at our Sundance, uh, you know, missing her, and I think she knew that we were praying for her. I believe that uh, rational people don't do things like this. Most people are not evil, that they... Um, Influenced by drugs or alcohol, you know, they can, they're capable of doing some pretty terrible things. And I think that's what happened this night. I was saddened, and uh, I think the community was shocked. But I don't think they were shocked enough to want to do anything about it. After some time had passed, uh, things went back to business as usual, it seems. And things like this have been become far too commonplace in our communities. And... A few months later, another young lady was murdered. Life was taken from her and she uh, left before her time. There are other incidences where young ladies are victimized and nothing ever seems to be done about it. She's the only friend I ever had from Little Eagle. And I used to, when I'd see her after that, she'd come up and Hey, what's up, TPZ? And how you doing? And I said, Are you going to school? And I was like, Yeah, I go to Vermilion now. And she's like, That's good to hear, good to hear. And uh, she acted way different. She is, she acted way, way different than, any, than anyone I ever met. She. She shined and all this dimness on the res. She said she wants to learn it and learn our culture and she wants to learn to speak Indian. Well she already did and she knew pretty much all the basic words you can say and everything. She's always wanting to grass dance even though it's a boy's thing. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know, she's about the same age as me are a little older than me, maybe. And we watched her have a grass dance special like two years ago, and she won it over in Little Eagle. And yeah, joked around with each other. Always seen her have a smile on her face all the time.
It's a sad occasion when she lost her life. I think that's when her, I don't know if I should say that, but her fame came out, that she's well known in other places because she was highly educated in here on the reservation. Mm, wow, she always, she always stuck up for me whenever people try to put me down. No, she's a real, she was a real good friend. She, I don't know. Still can't believe the time she's she's gone. Still feels like she's here. Um, I don't know when I when when she got older, I thought I thought she would be a, like a Lakota woman or something because she's always she's always be talking about that stuff. So he's just, I don't know. She always liked to lecture us and stuff and tell us if we're being bad or something. No, she's just cool. Uh, when I seen her, she never seemed to be uh, downcast or anything. Always smiled. Seemed happy young lady. Uh, I know there was a time in the sweat lodge, though, she uh, cried because she was concerned about some things in her own life that she was dealing with. She is well spoken. She talks to anybody. She, even though she don't know you, she'll come up to you and make friends. Her message was about cleaning up the reservations of alcohol and drugs and uh, getting people, young people, motivated to, to getting more education. This, some people just don't even know who they are. They don't even appreciate it out of the whole world we got to be who we are and she knew and she knew who she was she placed herself in uh, that school in Mitchell Abbott House mm -hmm. on her own she didn't want to be involved with her family because her family was into the alcohol a lot and I really uh, commend her for that because she just all on her own took herself out of her own family to put herself into another place in, in a school. When, and then when she came back, she was a totally different young, young lady. And she had some pretty good goals. I liked them. Because she, when she talked about them, she was always smiling, you know. Anxious to do this, and I'm anxious to do that. Or I want to go here, and I'm, she wanted to go right now, or do it right now, but she had to give it a little time, and which she seems like she didn't want to. Lakota had like, she wanted to do a lot of stuff. She wanted to graduate from high school, and she wanted to go on to college and everything. To me, I felt like she probably intimidated them. She probably made them second guess themselves and think. Maybe I don't really know who I am or and she knew and she was proud of it. She was like two steps ahead of him. I didn't know her for long, but I understand that she adopted me as her grandfather later after she got to the reservation and that's quite an honor to me. She walked her talk. She didn't just say things and let it go out into the air to see if it touched anybody. She stood in front of you and talked to you, whether it was one-on-one, -on -one, and she always was very respectful. She, For the few days that I knew her, she treated me with a lot of respect, treated my wife with a lot of respect. And, uh, you know, that kind of beauty there, and I'm not talking about outer physical beauty, I'm talking about that inner that inner spiritual beauty, she had it. And when she talked with you, you, you didn't have to question her whether she, was, whether she was being truthful or not. You knew that she was telling you, uh, talking to you from, uh, from her heart. She was telling you the things that she knew that she wanted to do. And, and you can't have that without having a lot of spirituality within yourself. Okay, she wanted to get back into sun dancing, going to ceremonies. That's where she went with her aunt. She was beside her, but I talked to her. I said, you have to mean what you're doing. 
Yeah, Mom, I will. I said, you can't be going around at night. You've got to stay home. Then she did go to Sundance oh, um, ceremonies with Helmi. And she came back and she was really happy. I said, Mom, she said, do you think I can Sundance? So I said, I don't know. I said, she said, I want a Sundance for you, she said, because you're sick. To me, I, I was up. Uh, Happy there was another, there was another Lakota woman like that, thinking. You know, just glad there's one more. We have not lost her completely. We have lost the body, but we have not lost the spirit. The spirit is always with us. Maybe this is her way, or the creator's way of using Lakota within our family structure, as I say before, that we are not united. We are together, but not, we're not in spirit. We all do our own things here, this way. So that is why this had happened to us. But the more I think about it, I think this is the way Lakota's input into our lives. Like I said, we never know what we have until we lose it. And this is, I think, is a message for us well, I believe that her passing, uh, although I hate to say this, but it came as a lesson to us that not to like, take life for granted, but the major thing that, that we should learn from that is that we must capitalize any time we have a young person like her in front of us. We should all sit down and listen. We should all sit down and, and listen to her visions, listen to... Uh, what she wants to accomplish, or he, it might be a boy. Hey, they're speaking words of wisdom. We need to learn. We have to listen to you, the youth of today. We have to listen to you. Uh, what you need and what you want in the future. You know, we should uh, listen to the elders and what they have to say. But I also said, don't forget that there's always a few selected few young people that have got something to say and that we can learn and, and educate ourselves by their words. And she was this type of person. She was a type of person that was going to bring you what you needed to know when you needed it if she was in front of you.
we ha ya he ha we ha ya he he la kanta ya te ki wa chi tra ka pe we chon cha ge sha ko in ki wa chi ni ya pe hai we chon cha ge sha ko in ki a pe yo hi ya hi na ji pe hai wo spe na wo shi la ki we cha ku pe hai I was feeling bad about my mom and dad getting a divorce, and I wrote this poem. A lonesome warrior stands in fear of what the future brings. He will never hear the beating drums or the song his brother sing. Our many nations once stood tall and ranged from shore to shore, but most are gone and few remain, and the buffalo roam no more. We shared our food and our land and gave with open hearts. We wanted peace and love and hope, but all were torn apart. All these was taken because we did not know what the white man had in store. They killed our people and raped our land and the buffalo roam no more. But those of us who still remain hold our head up high and the spirits of the elders flow through us as if they never died. Our dreams will live on forever and our nations will be reborn. Our bone and beads and feathers all will be proudly worn. If you listen close, you will hear the drums and songs on the winds. And in the distance, you will see the buffalo roam again. <laughs>